T-minus three, two, one, zero. Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of the Launch Sequence Podcast. Today, with a little bit of salt. Not not because it's like actually salty, but friend Salty Mike is with me today. Welcome in. How you doing? Good, good. How about you? Thanks for having me. Doing great. Doing great. It's been a little while since we got to sit down. And yeah. as you all know, Launch Sequence Podcast, Space Game Podcast, that basically only talks about Star Citizen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I wanted to bring in Salty Mike. Obviously, you got plenty to say about Star Citizen. We are starting off with a pretty wild year coming off of a confusing year. Um, and there's a lot of hype, but there's also just a lot of discussion. I wanted to pick your brain about some of the big things that are going on and, and talk about kind of how you felt and where that's going now. Uh, it's, really, this is what we do, I think, every time you come on. So thanks for, thanks for joining me. How have you been? <laughs> not too bad. Not too bad. Uh, obviously, just still st are we still riding the citizen con october high a little bit they've been able to keep punching it up with yeah. these iscs i think yeah they're like it's being held on by a few threads now but it's still holding on so yeah. i think yeah things are things are going okay um just yeah basically trying to keep afloat when it comes to content but the the excitement is still there for sure yeah, you know, it's absolutely still riding um, from Citizen Con just because they are, they did what they showed us what they showed there, and they are continuing to dive deeper uh, as they've come back from holiday, and it's it's been nice. It's definitely a little different from previous Citizen Cons. Like yeah. even even last year, it feels like this was what last year should have been because at the end of last year they're like yeah squadron 42 features they're gonna start coming to you guys and we're like oh okay cool we'll look out for that in the next six months and then we just didn't yeah. really see them and now we're actually seeing them so yep. that that has been nice um absolutely yeah <laughs> it's uh i think it's just been like i loved the previous year citizen con because it was pre-recorded and there was no opportunities for like hey if we said something we weren't sure we wanted to say we can just retake it and 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 i thought everything was like very crisp clean concise until the end when it was like rich tyra and chris right and then it got a little goofy yeah but the this citizen con was that but live with you know 10 times more uh features and just the things that they harped on were like reputation rewards gameplay uh you know feature polish and it's just like okay Things that matter. This is different. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. So since then, um, we've been up and down. IAE happened and then the year closed mm -hmm. out and it's always kind of lower excitement in January. Um, but you've been trying out some other games, right? Yeah. What else have you been playing? Uh, I've played, I've been playing with Moist Noodle. I've been playing Valheim. So we like talk to each other and we just came up in discussion that we never played Valheim because we played it, well, we did, but we played it in the very early release of it. All of our friends like skipped ahead of us when we were playing Star Citizen. And then we didn't, we, like we, we didn't get the full experience because everybody was ahead of us and it just didn't mm -hmm. feel good. So we decided to like play together once a week on a server, just us. And it's been an amazing time. I've been playing Enshrouded a little bit with Void Dude. Um, I've been playing Age of Empires 4. <laughs> I've been nice. playing uh Eco came out with a new update. I've been playing like anything but uh <laughs> I've not been in the PU forever. And it's um I just I think I needed this break. Like I cannot the way the year went in in the PU, there's so much good, but there's they highlighted so much of what's wrong with the current game with the builds that we're playing now right just completely broken economy no like once you have so much money why am i playing the money that i'm collecting doesn't mean any you know and it's like yeah. it it got uh exacerbated like that issue was exacerbated so much by the the maze and all and the weevil eggs and all these things that were in ships that people were playing piracy was fun if you wanted to do that but even then it was like 
why am I pirate? Like none of this stuff matters. Yeah. And um, so that's, it's weird. The game is in a better place than it's ever been. Yet it feels more dead to me than it ever has. Right. And it, it's, it's a weird feeling. To have. Would you say, would you say you have less fun playing than you did a year ago? Yeah, probably. I, I, I don't think. I, yeah, actually playing. Yes. But I am, I think with 323 and even with, I think like 321, there was still a lot of stuff to like jump into and check out and be like, oh, this is cool. And the, the length of a patch cycle of like how long I can enjoy it has extended. And I, how could it not be very extended with 323 with just the sheer amount of things yeah. to check out and see how they work, right? These aren't uh throwaway features nearly everything there is something worth diving into so um like to answer the question yes but at the same time um i i don't think i'll experience that in 323 nearly as much yeah it's interesting that i have trouble looking at the features of 323 and deciding whether or not they're quality of life or actual features because it's like a star map update M most of quality kind of, of life yeah it's like quality of yeah. life but at the same time it's like one of the best things that's happened to the game in six years. So I, yeah. I feel like calling it quality of life is not doing it justice. No, I, I think what they call them in, in the patch notes is like feature updates, right? Mm -hmm. And and these are like major feature updates going from tier zero to tier one or yeah. tier zero to tier three. I mean, we might be skipping some tiers here because some of those tiers may have happened and were iterated in Squadron, right? Mm -hmm. So Before we ever saw them, yeah. Exactly, which... It's good and bad at times, I think. Yeah. Like we're I think we're you you were playing Gun Rush and and Kill Collector and uh, some of those features that you're experiencing in there were developed in Squadron and now we're getting feedback once they're actually in our hands of like maybe not a good idea some of these things. So I I will say this the some of the stuff like uh that makes things like Deathmatch or Gun Rush or any of these things not as fun are definitely going to get hit by those 323 features like the looting screen interaction mm -hmm. system the maps like that's i think what what makes them feel so much better than quality of life it's just that they're going to change how we're even playing simple death matches i mean cor I, correct me if i'm wrong but i think the i forgot what they call it but there's that that f you can basically cancel a reload Right, they were talking about that. Yeah, like right now, if you run out of bullets, your gun automatically starts reloading, and you there's a sneaky way to cancel reloads now. Um, I, I forgot how to. I think you just quickly hit melee, and then you're able to. Um, but you will be able to cancel reloads and and just do normal things that you would normally experience <laughs> in every other FPS game. Um, might be in 323, so all of the jank might be different jank in 323. Yeah, at least. Um, yeah, but it could be a lot better. I'm ready for a fresh coat of jank. Bring it on, Star Citizen. Let's it's go. the only place where I'm going to ask for that. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, let's 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 start diving into the discussion for today. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming and listening. Thank you to the people who are here live. This podcast is supported by our supporters, so if you would like to get it ad free, be able to watch it live and come talk to us before and after the show. Check it out on Patreon or YouTube. But Did you let's... know there's a uh, free free YouTube subs right now do you know about it? this no what do you if mean if you if you have if you've had youtube premium for three months you get up to ten dollars free to to give to a creator it's like, like a twitch prime really yeah i feel like i yeah. feel like that's probably something i should know about <laughs> it just happened like yesterday all right so, i gotta i gotta yeah. look into that that's cool i don't i don't really do that stuff so i figured i'm coming cool. here i should definitely definitely let you know well thank so you So i would throw in a ten dollar tier if i was you I will I'll consider that. I was, Folks, I, I don't know I what it looks like on your end. You. I was about to sub to you, but there was a five and then a different tier. And I was like, maybe let me, get, let me see if we can get them the max possible. Do a $10 tier. Yeah, I don't know about that, but it is, it's good to know that they're doing yep. something special. I didn't know they were into that. Um, yeah, because you can only use one. So if you have a five tier, oh, I see. that's I it. See, I see, yeah. yeah. Okay. I can't do two fives. Well, let's talk about uh, how you're feeling. Uh, about star citizen there's a lot going on but looking at it from kind of the big picture things the idea of it being a video game uh what do you think is really going right for them what what did what do you think they're 
going in the right direction on the most right now it, it's something that like maybe um ignorant me a few years ago thought was a terrible idea is what they're doing now and it it feels right um and and that's we are going to throw and and i don't know if it feels right but it, it's what they're going to do and i'm and i'm not upset about it i guess and that is we are going to throw features into this game whether they connect or not we do not care and we are going to get get feedback on those things and we are going to make them better and then in the meantime we have you know like the SEL that we had last week with the economy team mm -hmm. right and then you have those guys who their job is to connect all these things together and then you read the monthly report about Repu or and roadmap roundup about reputation, right? Yeah. Those guys are the ones that are going to help tie these things together. So everyone's, and then the core gameplay thing, and it's like, I'm feeling so much better by what they're saying, right? I feel like they're saying all the right things. It feels like they're starting to do the right things. And now it's a matter of 323, what does it feel like? how much of this squadron 42 polish are we going to see and how how much of throwing these features in uh in the deep and throwing us into the deep end on some of this stuff how is it going to feel i i whether they're good bad ugly i'm less concerned i'm more excited by the fact that we are kind of m focused in on on the game we are focused on bringing basically what you know when everybody says it's an alpha mm -hmm. to me right now this is what i always thought would be the alpha which is we are bringing features to the game mm -hmm. and that's it and we are developing what players will do from beginning middle and end to the game right and that's you know them talking about things like the uh like crafting and the i forgot what they were called the blueprints and things like yeah. that right these are these are those things so um that's i can't not be excited i've never felt more confident about this game in my entire life whether or not that will happen is hard to say but i am confident on what they're saying because the tune has changed i do not know why but the tune has changed and it's probably Everybody coming back from Squadron has has changed that tune, right? So it feels right. Everything is is it, it's just a different feel, and it and it doesn't feel as ugly, and as you know, gimme 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 by the ships as much as it. It sounds like they're highlighting the the game, and and that's the most important thing for them. And it's, it's just a different tune. Yeah, the when they talk about features coming into the game it's less about how the feature actually works and more about how it drives our experience forward like you yeah. get to you get to experience the reputation and how it's going to change that mission as opposed to hey this is the reputation ui this is how reputation works like it's it feels like we've taken another step forward like they were yeah. trying to build a car for these last five years and it just started it's like now the car is starting to move a little bit yeah, they were just talking about like what they wanted it to look like. And they drew a lot of pretty pictures of it. Right. And like you got to like play and, 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 dr and drive the concept car. But now it's like the pro now we're in production phase. Yeah. That's what it feels like, you know? Maybe not production, but because that would, I don't know. But like we're not in the let's put everything together phase yet because we have to get the pieces in there. Right. It, yeah so it's almost like you know in a puzzle we're taking all the we're finally taking all the pieces out of the box and laying them out on the table and figuring out what the corners are it's that's, that's what it feels like to me you mentioned that like the the economy team was kind of connecting things together and reputation connecting things together and like the emissions team economy team and narrative team feel like three that have taken such a step up in importance over the last couple of years and that seems like a big part of that too just making it feel more like they care about the flow and the actual idea of the game being some sort of a narrative that we're playing in. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I have not been able to, so you might be able to uh, enlighten me on this a little bit, but this like dynamic event thing that's going on, it, there's, there, there appears to be like a lot to this, right? This is a big difference. What is that? Um, 
so uh, on the PTU, it appears to be a Xeno threat. Like Jared on SCL said that there was going to be a change to Xeno threat. It's going to get really big. And on the PTU, there's, I see, I jumped in just, just before the, the podcast now. Um, Cause I was, you know, all, all week I was dealing with my, my sick cat and, and finally she's feeling better. So I, I've had time to jump in today and the, like I can join a mission and there's five phases. I, I just ran down to a bunker. I had a pistol and no armor. So I ended up running into a bunch of bugs and getting killed, mm -hmm. but that's as far as I got, but it, it appears to be this whole thing. And then there's an Idris and the Idris has an interior and people have boarded it and there's all sorts of stuff going on. So what? yeah, Man. yeah. I'm I'm out of the loop. So this is that five stage that pre Xeno threat dynamic event thing they were talking about, and you, yeah. but you don't know what it actually entails. I don't know. I don't know anything about it. That's as far as I got. Was I went down to a bunker. It, it, basically, my understanding of is it, of it is is they decided to take a bunch of mission, uh, whatever they called. Like Elliot came on and called them like a certain name, like a bunch of little pieces to the puzzle of of missions, like and modules. tied them all together, modules or whatever, right? So the first yeah. thing I had to do was go down to a bunker and hack the mainframe, like the new hacking uh, missions, right? Mm -hmm. And that's where I died. Uh, and I also forgot that I put my tool in there, and then it failed. Like I ran out of time. Okay. And I got a crime stat and everything, but the <laughs> so it was just a mess. But I think they're. From what I've heard from other people, is they're tying all these like pieces of missions that they had and making it this one dynamic thing. I don't know if it's a dynamic mission that you trigger. Are we triggering it by doing those things? I have no idea. Mm -hmm. But um, it looks extensive and it looks different than it looks the same, but super super involved in comparison to what we had before. So I don't it'll, know. It'll be interesting to see if they try to expand these events out to have storylines that people play through. Yeah you know trying to like the more phases there are the more chances there are for somebody to come in and phase four out of five which can kind of ruin the experience yeah the the whole thing around both they call them global events and they call dynamic events a thing but none of them are dynamic yeah i, I think i think that's like they're trying to shift towards using global events because they're not dynamic it feels like the dynamic events are things like korea which is actually yeah, they, yeah. korea and the uh the one ghost hollow, ghost hollow right yeah. those are actually created by us and, yeah. and actions that we do um but you know this is not we're still not in the tony z you're gonna make do all these actions and then it's gonna create this thing yet and and part of me is like why are we making these more complicated why are we making more of them in the first place why don't we just sit down and make them as dynamic as possible i wonder what the blocker is and preventing them from doing that yeah um but i'm getting yeah, i mean it, it I'm, looks crazy I'll, i'm guessing I'll say that if you can make more of these types of events then you'd just be able to repeat them with different factions and stuff and other systems so it is kind of nice always to the have idea. a catalog yeah yeah that was always the idea it was this was a a a thing that that would be like yeah I don't, I don't have to add anything to it it was it would be repeatable you can create other versions of this just mm -hmm. skin them differently change a few few lines and there you are yeah all right so when it comes to what they're doing right big time it feels like the direction of just making the game make, taking it from tech demo to alpha is yeah just and communicating yeah you like the <laughs> communication lately lately yeah it's like even isc how about how about isc coming out on time every single day this year how I don't even know what's on exact time, same time anymore. <laughs> it's a, a, 11 a.m. Eastern time every wow. single time without fail on the not on the nose like it was done in advance. That never happened last year. Right. Uh, even even just stuff like that. It just seems like they're more on the ball now. Yeah. We were saying that on the stream earlier that since like September, October time, it feels like they have stepped up in sort of I don't want to say professionalism, but like, yeah, polish. Yeah, kind of for sure. Like Jared you can yells see from... at us a little bit more now, <laughs> which is I think is a good thing. Uh, but the 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 professionalism is is absolutely there, and it's yeah. different and it's and awesome. It, it kind of started off with a bang at Citizen Con. That was yeah, by and large the most the smoothest Citizen Con they've ever done. We didn't start an hour late. No, everything was, was 
it was smooth. Yeah. And it had so many opportunities to not be. Like, there was so much going on, and it was smooth. Yeah. Yeah, it was good. Yeah. All right. So, now we flip it. Tell me what it is that they are doing that you're not super into lately. Hmm. What do I not? This can, can you believe it? That this is the hard part? This is you the hard part. You need to change your name, man. I know. Um, Sugar Mike. I, hate, I absolutely hate the uh, what's coming with the freight elevators. And like from, from a, a few perspectives, the, the sneak peek that we saw on the exterior of the, like, the little outposts, you know how it yeah. was like connected to a landing pad? Yeah. It's like, who's not going to be trolling you there? Are you kidding me? We're out in the open, regardless if it's an armistice zone or not. If I can use a tractor beam, so can somebody else. It's like, how are we going to deal with that? That's super weird. And so the first thing I was thinking of, like, this is a troller's paradise. And then um, the the other thing was the the uh, getting your items back. All I want to hear is one thing and one thing only that this solution is temporary because CIG has the absolute worst possible system for items, item skins, ship skins, yeah. everything. The worst uh, possible yeah. system. And we are creating a system of recovering those items in an alpha that it's fine for the, it's actually perfect for the alpha. Who cares if I'm duping items in the, in the alpha, right? I don't. Who cares? But if I have my challenge coin from a uh, kill collector and I drop it on the ground and I'm able to get it back, like that doesn't matter now, but that will matter five years from now. Yeah. But because that, you... I, that item should be unique to this event on this, this few weeks and 10 years from now in game, that thing is going to be like this epic item that very few people have. Cause you know, people come and go from games and those few items that are left are always super valuable and it feels like they don't recognize that aspect of mmos at all so we'll see it's got to be temporary they just got to tell me it's temporary and then i'll so um, how would you like it to be changed from what it is right now uh, like there, if for the you actual not game be able to, yeah so you sh first off you got to go from my blue devastator shotgun from the subscriber store is not the item the devastator blue shotgun that has a totally different name and is its own uh item id and all these things right they're all unique items that mm -hmm. is insane when we have graph databases and all these things with millions of items and then they're complaining that we have too many items in our inventory that's your fault not mine right <laughs> it's like why are you complaining about like and and then care like how about this uh character repair well we we can't repair everything because you have too many items oh again not my fault yours fix that part and then we won't have a problem so that's got to change to like, I'm able to apply this skin to my Devastator shotgun when I find one or when I buy one, done, right? And then from there, there's obviously unique items like the Vandal Mask, the Challenge Coins or whatever, name name whatever thing, right? Mm -hmm. there's, there's things that are unique from everything else. Those are obviously going to be their own items. I don't know how to deal with that. I'm not a game developer, but I know that there are many options like transmogs or whatever, and it's up to CIG to decide what to do, but duping items is not the answer. How about the skins? Ever. So, so Skin, the whole skins, idea that... Go ahead. Skins can... can uh, I think like Rust might do something like that where you pick it up, it's your skin. When I right. pick it up, it's my skin. It's not very real. It's not very realism, but it, it works. <laughs> and maybe in, in Star Citizen, you can't, like we, we see uh, from CitizenCon, and I think we saw it in ISC, the uh, wear and tear. Well, once that skin wears off, you can't yeah. reapply it, whatever, right? So and again, it's comes... not going to be a unique item. So you just have a Devastator shotgun. You don't have the, the blue Devastator shotgun, which makes it unique and special, mm -hmm. right? So it doesn't matter. You just have a Devastator shotgun. And yeah. It's blue. So. This all comes from basically just that people want their subscriber items back. They don't want to lose them permanently. Yeah. yeah. And they shouldn't. And they shouldn't. 
They absolutely shouldn't. You paid money for that. that that's crazy, right? Yeah. I'm not saying that, and I'll never say that. It's just the choice that we have now is not the best choice, mm -hmm. right? You should absolutely be able to get those things back. That would be insane if you couldn't. Let's go back to the freight elevators because it wasn't just the kiosk that you had. Oh, right. You were talking about um, the outpost and how yeah. people can be trolled there. I think that's a mm -hmm. good point that we're seeing now with a lot of, now that we're getting, like you said, into more of a game situation, those mm -hmm. questions of how do we interact with each other are coming up more because the distribution centers, something else we could talk about, I think is another possible location that could be an issue. We were talking to Astro Pub earlier today. And he was saying, from his point of view, uh, simultaneous missions with basically no armistice zone and all these interactions can lead to a ton of trolling on, of people on missions and stuff like that. Do you, do you think, do you know if Star they've ever mentioned a solution to that? Like making sure people don't get trolled when they're running these missions in open environments so much? No. And I, it is a curious one. Uh, I mean, how the game currently works is if you have a mission at, uh, I'm trying to think of a name, uh, Post Han or something like that, right? Uh, or something like that. If you have a, a, a mission there, nobody else is getting a mission there, but that doesn't sound like it's the case here, right? Because there's obviously going to be simultaneous ones. The only thing I can think of that might help some people out is uh, instance hangers. Oof. I'm doing cargo mission at this location. I have an instance hangar. I'll be able to load my cargo ship up. But when you leave, I don't know. But um, that's, like you said, that's ahead. just for people running missions. Like, what about people just who cargo. are just showing up, you know, to, yeah. to that location? And, like, let's say you're at a derelict mission to run a an assassination. Other players could just come there and kill you while you're doing it. If you're going to a distribution center for a cargo uh, mission another player could just steal your ship as soon as you land and th there's a lot of little things they can do to fix these but i i just there's i do one wonder big one. and they're good and they're doing it it's reputation right you they're think doing that, it and you, you... did you see the isc did you see the little hd with the yeah, red yeah, and yeah. yellow and it's... i don't know exactly what that was but it looks like hurston's going to hate me <laughs> and if person hates me, our NPC is going to follow me around. Is my li like if you are a criminal in this game and you are doing things like this, your life needs to be more difficult, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And what difficult means is up to them. But I can tell you it's been way too easy on people for way too long. Yeah. And and now everybody who is a, a not a PVPer fears that all because these things have been happening consistently, consistently, consistently. People, this is a fear of everybody all the time to the point where I think that they're almost being unreasonable about the solutions to the problem yeah. because they've never seen actual punishment for players. And that's what we need. And it starts in 320. It only starts in 323. Will it be effective? Probably not. Yeah. Right. That's... But then, but then I get to come back at, everybody and say well it's an alpha two sometimes and and that's one of the situations where it might not work perfectly now but it's starting finally starting to punish people the way it should be pirates like space cutlet and mongrel squad and and all these guys should not have an easy time hanging out in stanton they should be having an easy time hanging out in pyro right and picking off people and then coming here on a big coordinated thing and then they deserve whatever they get Right? Yeah. whether it's punishment or booty and that's it take the booty yep. but like i said uh, well actually like you said um if you can use a tractor beam somewhere someone so can someone else and they won't get yeah. they won't get negative rep for that so maybe the, the, not the trolling potential but... is i think turning up because they're offering more missions in open-ended areas yeah i i posed this question when i was complaining about it and i and one of the mission devs were in was in chat and they were like this about it. So mm -hmm. I don't, because we have reputation. We have a law system. Are they addressing the laws along with bringing these features on? Maybe, maybe not. It seems to be like a TikTok situation where we bring the feature in and then the law system catches up to all the problems that we that we create for everybody, mm -hmm. right? So uh, that'll probably be a thing either in a dot one, 324, 325. 
329 because when is 4.0 <laughs> ever gonna happen you know it'll happen but don't uh, hurt me with those when? numbers dude i would not have expected like if when we were in when we were back three four three five i would never have even imagined we'd reach 320 <laughs> me neither and i was the, still you know as as a uh, glass half empty as possible i still never thought it would have been this bad right i mean three eight three or no 2018 was when they first started talking to us about server meshing and right. it just it's been really tough right we saw the replication layer test recently i would say that you, to answer your question about what's gone bad it went really bad the last test and we haven't had another one since oh. that makes me nervous yikes right so there's it's, that it would be interesting to if if server meshing did work out for them back in 2020 what would the game look like now because we would have gotten oh God. into a server meshed environment but the features would not have been anywhere near like how would that have shifted the way they were working on features oh my god i mean they would you in in reality you would know i, I think i've talked about this on this podcast and everything i've ever been on is server meshing is like the boxes that we're in now it creates the it, this is the sandbox these are the walls of, these are our limitations we can fit this many people uh, in a performant server environment. Here is our, and then we'll add more servers or whatever. Whatever they do, they know the boundaries and the limitations of what they can do. Our missions can only have this many uh, NPCs our, and, and this many people in an area. We'll build around this. Our raids, like we're doing at distribution centers, we can only have this many people. Siege of Orison can only look like this. For now, they're just doing whatever and nothing works because... Yeah. They don't know what they can and can't do. It's my understanding that server meshing tells you what you can and what you cannot do. And then there's we build from there. And they've never had that hard lock as much. Yeah, They've talked about it before, like frame rate caps or whatever. But, I mean, hell. It's kind of like on the monthly reports, they, they list out their, their tech team. Mm -hmm. the feature team who gets the stuff from the tech team and then the content teams who get the features from them and turn it into the yep. game it feels like server meshing is that step in between the features and content team and like they figure out server meshing and all of these giant box of features that they've been working on gets contextualized into an actual game environment and that's yeah. that's the hope if we want to continue to build it up as the jesus tech <laughs> i i don't even care if it's the jesus tech or not it's just the the it's the last thing that they, it's the last excuse they have. Like, excuse is the wrong word, but it's the last piece of that puzzle to deliver what, on the scale of things that they said that they can do. Yeah. Right? Yeah. That, is the, that is the last thing, and then the rest of it is about making the game. This was, always, like, we're still playing a tech demo, and anybody who hears me say that, sometimes they freak out. But in reality, they're still proving to you that they can make Star Citizen. Server meshing working is the last proof that it can happen. And then they just have to go out and do it. I know that's not simple, but they yeah. can't go out and do it until they can prove that they can make some of these crazy leaps and bounds that they said they could, right? It's, um, it's like their, their last major self-imposed hurdle. They exactly. haven't really given us a road to release after server meshing. Like even nope. all the way back to 2016, that no was no clue what, what a minimum viable product is, right? Yeah. No yeah. clue what end game is. No clue what the mid game is. We likely will know what those things are, and they likely will start talking to you about them when they know what they can be. <laughs> well, I think that's why they they just kind of threw base building into the discussion because they were too. like, okay, server meshing is is wrapping up. We need something else that. Like that's the next thing. And then even on yep. ISC now, um, yeah. I think one of the first times I heard them say it, he was like, now we're starting to focus on your guys' end game content. Like they don't, yeah. they didn't use those terms before. So they're no, trying they're to change the MMO, way we think. They're saying yeah. progress. They're, they're saying, saying things cohesive. like finished game. <laughs> yeah. It's, uh, they're not saying fidelity and immersion anymore and, uh, and sandbox. Bespoke. Yeah systematic systemic whatever right they're not all, saying those things anymore they're saying video game terms that make sense to normal people who play video games it's <laughs> it's different i will always stand for immersion <laughs> it's such a bone make a version immerse us bone <laughs> immerse us in 323 now yeah all right 
to, for, for those who are listening to the audio platform, Mike has a picture of Bowen behind him. We're not just randomly oh, invoking his name. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I want to do a little bit of a topic change here. Um, Let's do it. I, we're definitely going to get back to the game and gameplay, but mm-hmm. I think this is something that people probably want to hear a little bit of discussion about. Not something I want to spend too much time on, but there are reports of employees leaving CIG in any which number. Um, and I'm sure you've been asked plenty of times about sharing your own thoughts about it. So I figured <laughs> since we're sitting here together, we could talk this out. Um, I don't know everything that's going on. All I know is that Todd Pappy on his LinkedIn, it, it says open for work. That could be many different things, but Todd is a known person. This is a person that many people have seen over the years and kind of assume almost, almost place as being part of Star Citizen. So you could understand how him not being there might make people nervous. But like, what are you getting from even the possibility that he might not be there anymore? Uh, well, yeah, I think you said it really well at the beginning. I don't know anything. I just know this. And everybody in the community has started to speculate on what's going on with this human being that has kids and a wife and all these things. And like, I've met this guy in person. So this one kind and, and like had like normal, non star citizen related conversations with him. And um, so this one, I, I feel a little bit more bothered by the way people are just kind of talking about him like he is just this, you know, random person. But um, per- my personal feelings is like I didn't until recently, I'd said I would I do not want to make content or talk about or anything about somebody's personal situation like but again, you say he's a known person. This happens with like what big wow devs or like yeah. when, uh, what was his name? Jeff from overwatch left. It was like, you know, these are, this is Todd Pappy is like to that level for, for us, um, because of how CIG does things, right. They take these people, they put them in front of the camera and they put them up on this pedestal and make them these gods that, um, maybe they shouldn't be doing right because when these situations happen uh people start to panic and i don't all i've seen over the last few months is positive change and whether or not that's because todd left or not doesn't matter and i just don't think we should put as much weight into this conversation as a lot of people are and it's uh, we act like the people that come in on camera for, for Star Citizen are the only people that can make Star Citizen when there are thousands of game developers and thousands of games and really talented people. People have come and gone from this studio forever. Uh, remember when Wingman left and everybody thought that was it and then Jared came in? Even if Jared leaves... Somebody can, nobody can replace Jared, but somebody can take over the reins and do it their way. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And I mean, the last thing I'll say is it seems like either Johnny Jasivius, who kind of came in on the SCL in that 323, all about 323 show, but he was assistant. And at the Citizen Con um, live stream, Richard Tyrer was in uh like our channel just talking freely and basically saying he's running the pu uh, essentially and it was like or like star citizen and it was and i can tell you what the man's been communicating a lot and todd didn't interact with us in that way so that's been a positive thing from my perspective whether rich has taken over todd's spot or not i don't know mm-hmm. i don't care i just know that things have over the last few months have gotten better and I hope Todd lands on his feet and he was a really great guy. If, if, or if he, I mean, we're got to assume he's not there. LinkedIn is LinkedIn, right? You, so, yeah, you don't just let LinkedIn sit and not get updated. Yeah. You don't just make, position. yeah. You don't just update it and say you're looking for work if you're not looking for work. So it's a, uh, it's a crappy situation, but I don't, I think we're like our community is, very weird about this stuff well i mean it's it's the interior community of anything is going to be kind of fandom based and 
that's also the danger that we see like with a lot of tech companies and stuff is you get these people at the top of the tech companies and basically if the company does something instead of saying the company did it they're like that person did it it's like when when people come into your videos and they're like oh is this more of chris roberts lies bro this this video is three hours long chris roberts isn't in it <laughs> like, yeah. it's not him and yeah. and that's the same thing you're talking about like a single person can make a huge difference to a company but that doesn't change the direction of the company no necessarily and todd and i'm sure todd made incredible did incredible things anytime he was on camera he was open he was honest and uh yeah he was great but it's like we can't we can't get so doomy about things when somebody leaves like this happens so many times Excuse right me. i mean we've seen we've seen you're, doomy not, you're situations. not following your name like I know, but it's, it that's not a salty thing. It's I'm being salty towards how crazy people are about this stuff, right? But we we have seen situations where people leaving has had a, a huge negative effect. Bain and Merchman. It's true. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah so, that's true. Absolutely. So this could be happening have a here effect. as well. I mean, this dude came on stage and talked about base building. It was was that something he was heading up? See, Sounded like it. All right. See now that you know what that starts to sound like. I know you. I know you know. Come on, something what, announced by one person associated with that person didn't come out. That person wasn't around much. No, theaters of war. I have man. no idea what theaters of war. Oh, true, true. Sean yeah. Tracy on the on the stage with theaters of war, and and after that, for the next three years, people associated theaters of war with Sean Tracy. When no, you might not even he's be the theaters on. of war guy. Still, I don't even call him <laughs> Sean Tracy. That's his name. There you theaters go. Theaters of war guy. No. Yeah, I don't. I don't. He's the character customizer guy now. <laughs> That's right. Uh, we got water guy, character customizer guy, bone mission guy, of course. bone yeah, mission guy. Um, I don't. I I think I am in full agreement with you on the whole personal thing. I think it just feels weird. Right? I think people try to associate reasons too much with just news. Like take the news at face value and then move on from it. There, I on. think trying to find a reason for why that is the case or or read between the lines as things that may have happened because of that is a little bit yeah. too much because we don't know every puzzle piece going on right now. Yeah, like look around you. Things seem to be improving and then we're like being doomy about a guy leaving. But things are improving. Like, I don't know. And then all it takes is like one delay for things to not seem like they're improving anymore. Things can change 100%. with Star Citizen so quickly. 100%. Like anybody thinks 323 is going to 100% be delivered in April for sure, guaranteed. Probably not. Yeah. Morph I think got it's so much shit for, for his video, right? Right. And I did not see that. I didn't, I didn't well, see what it, happened there. He took it down. Um, yeah. It was just something very minor where, like, he thinks that it's obviously going to get delayed, where every Q Q1 patch is planned to come out in Q1, but never did. And, like, literally never did, except for one. Um, and if this one is planned for early q2 then it's cig and yeah that's pretty but much also, what he said and everybody freaked out and was like it always comes out in april and it's like uh, yeah. okay but this is different guys this is different it but is hopefully different. not because it they've is... been working on these features for years right so we're we'll yeah see. it's a weird place and i think their yeah. updates are a little bit different now but it's also this is this is a sales patch they have to put this in by may this is what's going to get them to boost their sales for invictus week when is Invictus? Because that's in, is that end in May? May? Yeah, end of May. All right. So I'm thinking so we, they got to get 323 in and then get another patch in right before Invictus to, to smooth things over. The dot one. Yeah. Because yeah, the dot one is always the sale for Invictus, right? Yeah. I, I think we get three patches this year instead of four. Do I care? No. If all the patches are like 323, why would I care? Three patches would be what? April, August, October? Or November ish. I think we go into possibly later in the for the first one. Oh, like okay. maybe maybe we don't get that April. Maybe we get it in May, and it's Invictus and yeah, yeah. I don't know, but I think maybe there's a do. chance that we do less patches but more features. Maybe they do like a uh, sort of a same code base patch, so like a three twenty three point two or three or whatever in like August, and then. 
try and hold off and do like a 4.0 end of year kind of thing. Do you think they're going to try and hit 4.0 summer? They they set that goal out for themselves end of last year. I can't. <laughs> like, just look at the replication they're testing. I can't. I just can't see it. You They got to at least prove that out. And then, and then maybe. But it just, it's been such a meme for so long. I just can't. You know, I you got to show me like for for me now, they're showing me that they're that they are at least thinking about doing the right things, talking about doing the right things. Um, you know, you look at the I mean, how cool was the month of report this this uh, month with the core gameplay team of taking yeah. all these teams and going, you are under one umbrella and we are working towards a similar goal. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Yeah. You know, like when people start calling me, you know, you can't, you got to change your name because you're not salty anymore. Well, what were the things that I was salty about? Why aren't we doing these things? And then they start doing them. Of course, what do you want me to do? Get mad about something that I've begged them to do for five years? No, man. Now you're reinvigorated, Mike. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, thank God, Mike. <laughs> thank god they're finally making sense the core gameplay thing is cool though because it does feel like they're it they're literally like we are the central core of the game and then everybody all the other teams can kind of make the stuff around us but this is where the reality yeah. of star citizen is is being it made. seems like they can focus like we're every, i think one of the better examples is like you got the mission team who added cargo containers to uh, bounties but then somebody else makes the uh service beacons which are the exact same mission with a different name like essentially right mm -hmm. but none of those have cargo boxes on them why it makes not, no sense yeah because it's not in the same umbrella of whoever's because running yeah, it. this team does this that team does that and and they didn't want to put the boxes in or they didn't think to or they didn't care to whatever it was it seems not like on the same team it seems like now that kind of gets to be the economy teams say probably but, and it should be yeah it's it's weird i mean that's part of their internal structure that we don't know but like you're saying the missions team has to be locked in the narrative team has to be locked in the economy team like they all have to be trading information on multiple different types of missions so they're they need to they're, work together yeah and they that need to that make sort star of star citizen not make their own little things that organization is probably just as important as their ability to make the features. And maybe that's yes. what we're seeing more of now, as opposed to the, the, the tech and the knowledge that they've had. Yep. Because with yep. the missions 100%. team, that's definitely what it felt like. By the time they showed off the investigation design briefs, and then they had like Elliot and them come on SCL at the beginning of last year, that's when it felt like CIG was like, okay, we have our missions team. They know what they're doing. Let's start giving them some, some airtime so people can see that stuff. And they picked up reputation. And we're just seeing that across the company in different places. Yeah. I mean, they've forever been the most important team. And yeah. they've forever been the team that seems like it 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 doesn't it's just always missing the mark because they're not getting maybe the support they need or whatever, right? And it's mm -hmm. just it sucks. Like everybody looks to missions to inform them what I should be doing. And um you know, most of the missions don't work. So it's kind of like, it's tough. Or they're repetitive or whatever, yeah, right? Dude, that's, oh man, that's, um, of, throughout the years that we've talked, you've always been a, let us play something that feels like a game kind of standpoint. And yep. that's been one of the most disappointing things for me over the last year is that I feel like with the Kakari factor specifically, the game feels a lot more open to feeling like a game, looting and logistics of boxes and all that stuff. But then yeah. the missions don't freaking work. And like, that's all I need. Everything else yeah. can be laggy and glitchy and stuff. I just want to be able to complete something and have that feeling of accomplishment. Not yeah. to I'm, shout out to EA. You know. I mean, I can't wait for, uh, for the cargo missions. They say they're tying reputation to them. I'm, I can't wait to see what that means. I'm, I'm assuming 323, it's like, I collect a small amount of cargo and then I get to collect a bigger amount of cargo and then I collect maybe a different type of cargo, fingers crossed. I, I really hope they bring like those Xeno threat, you know, I can't quantum travel um, like boxes, but make them the size SU1 through 
32 and mm-hmm. I have to go from Everest Harbor down to Hurston with them and because I can't quantum travel, you know, I just have to fly there, something like that. Bro, I didn't so even I'm, think about that. Oh, uh, I've bigger spent SCU hours, sizes. I've spent hours thinking about what those could be like. They have a lot of tools in their in their toolbox that yeah. they can pull from. I just don't know if they're going to do it right away in 323, but cargo stuff can get really cool, I think. I would love for us to get more unmarked locations that you can only go to if you have a certain cargo mission, maybe like a, a specific How company about... has a distribution center that you just can't go to unless they contact you. And, and then it goes in because, hey, 323, mini map, mm-hmm. star map, see marking. This is why, this da-da. is how I get too hyped, man. Because they haven't said anything Wait, about I'm waypoints. Wait, I'm the one hyping you? Yeah, stop what it. The, Mike, what are you doing? What man? is happening? <laughs> <laughs> but like they haven't, they haven't talked about uh, waypoints and like they haven't gone into super detail about the star map. So I'm trying not to be like, yeah, we're going to get waypoints and be able to go to new places. I don't think we're going places. to, to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I think I just read the Squadron 42 month report and they were like, we're trying to make it uh, the lines look like what you already have. And it's like, wait, what? <laughs> like, are we what okay. are we getting in 323? <laughs> yeah, so. that's that's going to be a, that'll be an exciting ISC. Because I think that's the thing that most people want at this point of, of all the features coming in that patch. I think the star map is number one on a lot of lists. Yeah, I think mine's cargo missions. Well, let's let's talk about that actually, because the distribution centers, the cargo missions, cargo freight elevators, all kind of coming at the same time, closely linked. Uh, you said that you're kind of not pumped about how they're doing freight elevators, but overall with these cargo advancements, just the items. Okay, just the items. Okay. Everything else is sounds. If it works, it sounds awesome. Is it uh, what you've always imagined for this game from this perspective? Well, I don't know if I ever imagined. Uh, like instance hangers. I love the idea of it, and I think it's I think it's great. Um, I think you know the way they sold you the game early on was like you know we could do anything, and so you thought they maybe could, but obviously they're going to need to start instancing some things now that we've we are where we are today. And um, I just love the, I, well, I like the idea of. I, I'm very curious how this is going to play out. Your home hanger is on a planet. What is the first thing you do when you log into a new patch? Leave, leave the planet. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So is this going to force you at the end of the day to be like, all right, well, I'll, you know, I'll, maybe I'll bed log here for now and out in the middle of space. Um, but like, you got to go home for the first time ever, potentially. So that like, we'll see how that plays out. Cause it's definitely potentially, I don't, I don't know. Um, how are the instance hangers going to work at like Everest Harbor or Port Tressler? How, am I going to be able to sort of make that my home? How will the inventories work? I still got a lot of questions, but yeah. um, I mean, I think it's definitely the right direction for these things. I also think that they think moving boxes is fun for everybody, um, which is, I like it, but I, I, I mean, there's so much apprehension to it in the community. I'm curious to see how that goes. But. Well, that's kind of like combat. They they didn't have much else to sell people on, so they just focus on yeah. combat all these years. They don't really have a lot to say in terms of like exploration or mining or salvage, so they're focusing a lot on on cargo too. Yeah, but it's, it's interesting. Um, crap! What did you say? Oh, you had said something that I wanted to go back to um uh instance hangers or my home location yeah yeah the home location um i figured that was kind of going to play out how it is now you just only go back to the home location if you want to really have that customization which at this point i don't think is going to be too crazy but we'll see it is it is again one of those game changes that makes it feel like it's less tech and more game because we have a home i don't care if it's a place i'm never going to go but the idea that like there is a central place, yeah, is it's actually pretty cool. And that if I'm not there, I'm considering bed logging or something like that. Yeah. I mean, and how about just something I haven't mentioned yet? Ground vehicles just became one thousand percent more useful. Yeah. They're they're still not useful <laughs> because you still <laughs> because they you still haven't quite them. <laughs> you still don't need them. They're, they're yeah. st- I think they're starting to like move in the direction to like make them viable with the way radar works with them. But the the fact that you could 
ring them out from anywhere is a big meaningful change and the fact that you don't have to like all right i take my ship out i take the elevator i go here and then i fly my ship and then i land and then i get out and then i go here and then i take the you know like all there's a hundred steps that just got removed to using them are people going to use them more often probably Uh, it's it'll be interesting to see what happens there as well there's so many pieces to freight elevators that are that completely change the game yeah completely that that is such a big deal but I really want to know cargo timers. It is. Will we have cargo timers? I need those. It is. Um, it is a good point because I don't even consider vehicles when I'm playing the mm-hmm. game. I I fly an Me MSR too. by stock for the last several years, or now I fly a C1 by stock, and I never mm-hmm. get that ship out and think to myself, "Hmm, should put a rover in here." Like, I'm. Yeah, but I'm why? pretty sure every single time I get it now, I'm just gonna put one in because it's there, and yeah, I might need. Why it. wouldn't you? Yeah. takes 30 seconds instead of 15 minutes right like what a difference so why wouldn't you yeah that's gonna make a big difference you could bring it just in case you yep. know if you're not running cargo why wouldn't you have a, a vehicle there and i have so many times when i'm when i don't have a vehicle i'm like man i wish we had just like brought one but it's yeah trying to go down to a bunker to but, yeah and there's no real obvious hiding place from the turrets and they're blasting you you just land and bring in a vehicle yes you know but and now, it's too complicated yeah. now, and then we talked about how they we need we need reasons for those vehicles. Now we just need more like drivable subterranean areas or canyons or something where you can't fly, just to make yep. them make more sense. Yep. Um, I have a question for you regarding cargo missions. It's it's a little bit of a weird one, but this is a hypothetical I keep putting out to chat as like okay. something I run into when I think of how missions work. So when they first started talking about the economy and the mission system, they they talk about, let's say Crusader is making a bunch of spaceships. They need a bunch of titanium. So okay. Crusader, the planet, as an economic node, would put out a call for materials, right? They'd say, yep. we need 6,000 6, tons of titanium. But because Seraphim Station is the cargo station where the stuff is supposed to kind of stop off before going down to the planet, does that mission go to seraphim station or does it go out to everywhere else and then tell people to take that stuff to seraphim station so i think it'll be both um i think what will happen is i think you'll start to see mission i think it'll be a mission-based thing i don't know if we're going to be moving commodities like that like the call going out will be a mission that goes out. Right. Okay. Yeah. Instead of um, maybe I think this is how Elite Dangerous would do it is we have like these community events. And when we hit the threshold, the community event has been finished. Yeah. So instead of that happening, it would be like, yes, we want to make this many ships. We need 6,000 SCU of titanium and gold and blah, 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 blah. And those would be missions that would be thrown out. And my assumption is, is that the 696 SCU and below missions would come from the location that can take those in because the port can only take in for now because you use Crusader, which is a unique example. That's true. Yeah, there, that might have been a bad docking. example. So let's, let's say Herson instead. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They need the same amount of stuff. 696 is the biggest cargo ship that can go to Hurston. Right. Those would be the missions that would come from there. The Everest Harbor missions would be in the 4,000s that your whole seas would move and below. So you have the choice. And then missions would go from Seraphim down to Hurston in smaller chunks, But I would, I would assume. But then that's... So if you wanted to take that mission, I guess, okay. So basically you would be getting missions from Crusader, or sorry, from Hurston down on the planet. And that mission would say, we need you to ship this much goods from uh, Everest Harbor down to Lorville. Possibly. Or we need you to bring this, these many goods from uh, Lathan on Ariel to Hurston, but they'll never do 4,000. They'll only do 696. Or because those locations will, like, did you see the freight elevators at those little landing pads? Those missions 
They're tiny. Are they? I thought they were freaking big. Oh no, the freight elevators in like at Everest Harbor were 960 SU or whatever we saw, yeah. right? How big the were the one in the zones? sneak peeked? The one in the sneak peek was a little corner of a landing pad and I it guess... looked like two 8 SCU boxes. Hmm, okay. That's it. So the missions that you'll get from Lathan to Hurston, sure. I think like hear hear me out here. What I'm saying is in in a very long-winded way is your whole A, your cutlass, your uh MSR just name the ships that you never use to run cargo now because you always go for the maximum amount of cargo. Sure. You're going to have missions that are that Hurston's calling out for you to do with those ships. Yeah. And you're going to go to those locations because that's the cargo that they're going to be asking for. 96 SEU of titanium, and we're going to pay you this much. I bring my whole A, and I go and do it. Or they're going to say 4,000 SEU from the jump gate from Pyro to Everus Harbor. Big money. So, Got to bring my whole C. So then the question and the becomes... And reputation involved, I'm sure, right? How do, how do they expand that to other systems? So Hull C is doing, you know, transfer between cargo stations and a system. Hull E mm -hmm. coming from Seoul to, to Stanton. What, what do you think a mission like that would look like? I think like, it would, would look that... exactly, exactly like the station to station ones that we have here they would just pay you more because you're going a longer distance mm. or or it's a more desirable item i don't think it would change from that because you would likely be taking it from i can't remember the names of the stations in pyro now but like that rough and ready station you would be taking i think i remember like one of the data mined items was like silicone i'll be taking silicone from that station over to everest harbor and be getting paid Probably big money because it's risky and farther. Okay. I, I don't see it. Like, what were some of the things that you heard people say or you, you had in your mind? My, my thing was more, I guess the missions make a lot more sense because that is a, a packaged sort of take from here, deliver here. Yeah, but you're talking was, commodity trading, right? Yeah, I more, guess more like when you get to the, like when they talk about the supply and demand of the economy, right? I don't know how mm -hmm. much of that we're going to be able to see, but if you're able to look at the, the stocks and supply and how many you're going to get for selling a certain thing, and you see that, like, let's go back to the example, Lorville needs a ton of titanium. If they're sending out missions to fulfill that, does that mean that somebody could screw up those missions by delivering them faster or are those just going to be on two different systems and like you can't really affect... You know, like, are the missions going to be technically like instanced commodities almost? Maybe. I, I don't know. It, it, like the one like absolutely like pie in the sky idea that I always think of is that if you actually wanted to do commodity trading, you would literally be at like the Hurston TDD and you would be saying, I'm selling 6,000 SEU of gold and you like do the transaction and that's what made the makes the mission and then either an npc or a player is the one who fulfills that kind of thing but that's like super crazy copium like level well, stuff in my mind i mean that's where beacons need to go yeah so i you, i just don't yeah. know like i almost think commodity trading needs to get killed because it doesn't make sense in the game they're making where it always made sense in rebel galaxy outlaw freelancer privateer because they were all single player games these games that they made i know freelancer had uh, multiplayer universes but it's still they weren't working in this way i i don't think in in my experiences with those games so we've always run into this very weird situation of like people sitting at outposts waiting for stock to come back and these locations aren't buying because of stock so who knows maybe the freight elevators make a big change of it, the stock doesn't run out and it's all about like how much time it takes to do all these things it's hard to say but you got you stumped me a little bit with this question because i don't know i think it'll mostly be mission based but commodity stuff just the last thing we heard about the difference was that commodity trading will largely remain the same and the stuff that you move in missions will be like soap and toothpaste and stuff that people wouldn't want to pirate Okay. Which didn't make a whole lot of sense to me. Like you thought that there I obviously things like oh, gold I and titanium remember. would need to get moved. Where yeah, was it that? was from 
it was on Spectrum. It was from a dude that was working in Austin, but I don't think he works there anymore. It was the last time they talked about um, cargo missions. Yeah, I think. it must have been around the design brief last year that it came up. Early last year, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah, it's... I mean, I, I was... I love the idea of something happening. Uh, let's say, like, in Stanton, there's, like, a, a big battle, and a lot of warships get destroyed, and so there's mm -hmm. a lot of repair, and because of that repair... The prices of repair go up and because the prices of repair go up people want to ship more like commodities there and because you're just paying attention you know that and can take advantage of it as opposed to like the game says hey these prices are different mission 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 you, you want to have still that free form sandbox style tomato z yeah exactly tomato z and that's that's yeah that's i think that's the gold standard for for cargo from my yeah. opinion so I don't know what but they're I, doing. I don't there, think though. we I don't think we get that dynamic nature of it no. right away. I, I mean, how glorious would it, would it be just every week change the prices? Like ha nice. have every price have a range and every week it just changes randomly within that range. Cuz like one of the most boring awful things about cargo right now is that you, you run a few trade runs. There's the the meta trade runs, and that's it. And then there's the people who go off meta because they don't want to be attacked by pirates. Yeah. That's about it's it. Kind of boring. There's, yeah, we need crafting. We need base building. We need, cra we need crafting. We need base building. We need crafting, crafting, crafting. Like, yeah. I, I couldn't believe when I first backed this game, and I got so much hate for it, too. You cannot make an MMO without crafting. That was insane. And they literally said, we will not have MMO-style crafting. When Did I first really? backed this game. Yep. And, I, and I, I just sat here and waited. And I was like, they'll figure it out eventually. Because <laughs> they have to do it. So that's like another, that's kind of like the, the, the skills, right? RPG style skills that they've, for the most part, been like, we're not going to do that. And now they're starting to talk more about it. What do you think of the way they changed some of these things that a lot of people find to be like core parts of the design of Star Citizen? Uh, I think it's great. And I think... Um, but I think it's great until they change the thing that I back the game for and that it pisses me off, right? And that's what happens to people. So, like, that that is not to talk about the funding of the game because it's just, you know, but it, it this is one of the biggest problems with it is you fund the game by designing a spaceship that does something special, right? Like a mining ship or an exploration ship and all these things. And you sell to the people out there that this is what it's going to do and this is how it's going to be. And then they come to the table to actually design that feature or that ship or whatever, and it has to change. And then everybody's like, you know, this is ridiculous. I'm getting scammed or whatever. And, and, I almost think like this reason is the re the rise of my popularity over the last couple of years is the they've started to develop the game more and more people are getting feeling wronged. And then I just started to resonate with more people by being like, hey, this isn't right. This is BS. Why are they doing it this way? This isn't fair. And um, that's sort of how I feel about the, the fact that they have to make changes is they have to do it. It is what it is. Yeah. But at times it's going to piss people off and they have to just learn to deal with that. And I think that they struggle with that at times with the roadmap watcher comments and certain things that they've done in the past. You, I, you, you're a creator, I'm a creator. So are they. And it is hard not to read those comments. Right. And it's hard not to react to them and it's hard not to have them sink in and make you feel crappy. Oh and, Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's but it's part of the job to get over that stuff right you get paid a lot of money to at least come up with a system to block that stuff out because yeah. yeah you gotta you gotta power through when you have something this big going yeah. on and i mean we see them time and again have to make concessions because they might design the game in a way they want it to be but when it comes down to the actual work we don't know and that's god that's been a difficult thing to grapple with because we know, I think they're going to do all of the features that they say they're going to do, but they might but they not won't do look them. The way, yeah. yeah. They yeah. won't look the way they said they would, because none of them have yet. Not exactly. They've gotten really close with they mining have. and some other things. Even, even I mean, something... structural salvage. 
That's not yeah. at all what was expected, right? And it was because when to they be honest, came down to the drawing board, they couldn't do it. To be honest, though, when I ask people what was expected, nobody really has a logical answer because the ships themselves weren't built in any sort of obvious way that it would work. Like there's yeah. gigantic grinder inside the reclaimer, but no space to get gigantic pieces of metal to it. Yeah, so, I mean, that ship needs an entire yeah. rethinking because that and, it just doesn't make sense. And we're going to see that probably with something like the Endeavor. Uh, who knows, we might even see something like that with the Orion. There's, there are a lot of places this game could change as it's being built, and uh, yeah. that's, that's something to grapple with for sure. There's a lot of gold standards that need to happen, and not all of them are going to be just adding uh, components to the ships. A lot Do of them are going to be like, this is how the game works. We need to make the ship work with our game, where... The, the ship, like, let's be honest, guys. The ships were released to the game to because they sold them to you and they didn't want to look bad in a lot of cases, right? Like, they knew they were going to have to come back to these things. It is what it is, yeah. right? And they'll get to it hopefully eventually. But, like, you know, Carrick owners, everybody, they, everyone has a gripe about their ships now because the game is being developed. Yeah. And the ships don't work with the game perfectly anymore. I think I covered this in a video last year that. They had to fund a game that didn't exist on ships that couldn't run in the game that didn't exist. So they, yeah, it's like it's, like, it's a fallacy. It it's a conundrum. not an ideal. It is not an ideal funding model, but it yeah, worked. It did, and that's <laughs> honestly one of the most amazing things about this is that it's still yeah. here. Like it's a miracle. Yeah. Um, other major changes though that are coming along, and we're seeing a lot of them now. That like the like you said, the game's being designed. Master modes is a big one. Pretty contentious. Huge. Do you have any feelings about that? Not really. I haven't touched it enough. Um, I I don't know what to think. You know, I know that they think it's fun in, uh, I guess, Squadron or whatever, but th there is a lot of polarization around it when it comes to the PvP community. All I'll say is this. I took out a Hammerhead, Master Modes, Pirate Swarm in Atmosphere, and that thing slapped. I took out a Hammerhead against some of the best PvPers in the game. In Light Fighters, it slapped them, and we were only half full. So the Hammerhead, like, what, it, at least when it comes to the ship teams, I have a little bit more confidence in them because they took a ship that was not fitting the role that it needed to, and now it does. It does exactly what you expected it to. Destroy Light Fighters. What do you, and light what fighters you have a hard time with it. To give that uh, a go. What do you oh in um just like free fly? No, it's a Pirate Swarm Master Modes test. I think okay. it's in either the PTU, I think it's in the PTU right now. It might okay. even be in live. I don't know what got pushed to live. So that or there's a master modes um I don't know, I'll have to look, but there's another master modes test where you could do it PvP wise. Okay. Yeah, I gotta check like that battle out. Battle Royale or something. I mean and, and or team, team battle or something like that. Squad battle. You could like, yeah, you can crew a hammerhead, but you can't bring enough people in your squad to crew the full hammerhead. It's kind of funny, but um, <laughs> even then, it slapped light fighters. That's of, like, cool. Top PVPers. It was pretty impressive. And then they bring engineering into arena commander. I'm like, guys, do you want me to play the PU? Like, <laughs> I I might never jump in. Like if they bring a like mining like a mining uh. Yeah. Esport. <laughs> like How crazy would do I keep talking about like you again. That would be so cool to have just arena commander instances for every type of gameplay. Man, that'd be awesome. Yep. One of the other major changes that is coming up with Star Citizen, and this is I'm kind of grouping this in with just general consequences players are gonna have to deal with playing this game that they don't really know about. We're talking, you know, cargo refactor means you're losing cargo. The loot system mm -hmm. means you're gonna lose that stuff. Uh, you can't fast travel. Death of a Spaceman is another big one. How do you think people are going to handle these things as they come online? Honest, you want my honest answer is I think yeah. CIG is going to handle it before it gets. You think they're going to change hand. change things, or I don't think it. Like he always described it as like a Souls game. Yeah. Do you do we really think Star Citizen is going to be as punishing as a Souls game? No, 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 no. They know they they have to recognize that most of their community is filled with casual, or like at least currently, very casual pie in the sky, uh, fleet viewer sharing 
players, <laughs> right? Like this is not like we're we're I don't know what their player base is going to be when the game releases. I think a lot of those players that I described are going to hate the game they build. Um like honestly, yeah. and it's it's going to be frustrating for them, which is why I've always talked about like we need to really have safe systems, certain systems where that people can just hang out um and do the things that people do on Twitter and on Spectrum and um a little bit in the PU now safely in the pu at some point just uh the community aspect of the game needs to thrive as well um but the game needs to thrive also so death of a spaceman i don't i i never thought it was that interesting of an idea because you pass everything down to your next of kin you don't really lose the character anyway um and you kind of do but kind of don't how do i think players will deal with it Players do not like full loot games. So that is my, that like when I bring up that item bank thing, mm -hmm. if this is your plan going forward, um, I'm, I don't know. Like that one thing is so contentious for me. Like, I literally don't know if this is the game for me. If, we're going to dupe items and items don't matter and I can't lose anything. What is the risk? What is the reward? There's a lot of uh, questions I need answered with that. But you asked about Death of a Spaceman, how, to play, how are players going to deal with it? I think they're going to get frustrated by 30 other things before they even get there. Do you think it's coming anytime soon? No. With, with things speeding up a little bit? Well, it's so hard. It's so hard to answer that question. Like I, we have to get we have yeah. to get through three twenty three first and see the state of that stuff and everything. Because like let me, it, let me again, rephrase. they're talking a lot, but they haven't. We haven't seen what they've done yet, right? Let me. I'll rephrase it to say, in the next two years, do you think they're going to start to introduce the idea at least, like an in inside Star Citizen, start to let them the larger side of the player base actually know it's a thing? Because most people don't even know, despite them talking about it. Again, it still makes it so hard because we have to judge. Do you know? Do you know where you really have to judge the mm. the speed of development after after like three twenty four, or or a, after this year? Like, if you're taking everything that you've worked on for two years in uh, Squadron and bring it to the game now, mm -hmm. this is three years of features, right? And like, how much are you working on now? And how quickly do those things come in now? So I hope, I hope the answer to, I hope to answer your question as yes, because if we're not focusing on risk and reward two years from now, like, what are we doing? This is crazy. Yeah. And, and so I certainly hope so, but this year is going to be a really interesting thing to look at of like, can they, can they develop this game at the pace they need to? Because we saw the way they, they acted towards the end of last year, selling the F8C, last chance, last chance, last chance, last chance to buy things because we know that funding is, is becoming incredibly important. And uh, if that's the case, development needs to speed up. So yeah. can they speed up development? And Because they have to ship a game. If you, they ship a game the, and, and it's, a, it's a decent game, these guys are going to be rolling in money. We all know it. So if they deliver... No, 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 there's... no, no. Mike, 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 Mike. Haven't you read the YouTube comments? They, yeah. This they, they're scam, purposefully it's not developing it because they'll make more money this way. That's the most idiotic thing on the planet. <laughs> yeah. You're an idiot if you say that. I'm sorry. You're the dumbest person on earth. <laughs> that one makes me laugh, man. $650 million over 12 years is not that much money for a video game. It's, it sounds like a ton because I don't have $650 million. I, Maybe Space Tomato does. I'm not sure. But oh. the... Yeah, Plus, man. right. Like six forty, right. <laughs> yeah. six forty. But you know, they they uh, year on year, it's not that much in comparison to how like guys. Valheim had five million purchases in the first month. Okay, Jesus. in one month, like they they far exceeded what CIG would make in a year. So it's like I don't know. Yeah, it, it, it's not as successful as people make it out to be. It's wildly successful. It's wildly interesting. It's crazy as a crowdfunded thing. Yeah. But imagine if they actually deliver something. Yeah. That, I mean, man. forget about it. They just, on cosmetics alone, as yep. long as they get the system figured out, like you're saying. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> yeah, I don't know what they're doing with that. Um, okay. Let's talk about, I guess, I wanted to finish up with kind of mass appeal. Um, you were just mentioning, well, actually, we talk about funding and how that's important. It seems like as this game has grown, they also are kind of marketing it to a wider group of people than than before. Uh, are they? Do you think they're shooting for like a mainstream style game at this point? Whereas before, it kind of felt like it was always going to be niche, and even now, it still feels niche. But it it seems in the direction they're headed. It's like they want it to be a big name in the industry. I think with Squadron, they're definitely trying to you know just reach the general gamer. But they've I don't think they've ever it's always been a niche game but i don't think they've ever in the way they it's your niche that you're interested in but every possible niche has been said that will be in it, it'll be in this game yeah so it's not a niche game it's just your niche that you're into well it's niche um, and the fact that you have to deal with so much other crap just to do what you yeah, want just to do what you want <laughs> yeah but uh, like i don't I think they've always starts like again we were talking like I don't want to talk about the funding but they've always they've they've always left everything incredibly vague. You you don't know what the end game is. I don't know what the end the end game is. I don't know what the mid game is. I don't know what the early game is. I don't know what I don't know what the game is. I just know it's cool, and they like that because we'll check it out. We'll be interested in it, and we might get a little ship, and we might back the game. And then because of that, we might get see a ship commercial and we might buy some ships because I don't want to go earn those and, um, you know, so on and so forth. Whatever happened, it's it's been it's worked for them, but I don't see them doing. Outside outside of Squadron and trying to reach gen a general audience that way, mm -hmm. I don't see them doing that with Star Citizen right now outside of what they've already done of we're making the best damn universe sim space sim mmo it changes every every year it's something new the game is something different it's the best it, something man it needs to appeal to somebody else now uh, it's the best damn uh whatever works in china because that's where they're going next right whatever the chinese market is interested in that's what this game is going to be this year something like that right it's just what it feels like is what they've done over the last little while so i think love... they've been trying to market more towards china i mean did you see that Bar Citizen with Chris and Sandy and did last you see summer that recording, yeah. No, I did not. Oh, it was crazy. What was yeah, it? Was like them talking to the bar? Yeah, citizen they were or? just talking. They were just talking to a huge bar citizen. It was the biggest bar citizen ever, and they're saying, talking about, would you want to play Squadron on a console or would you want to play it on a PC? It's like, why would you even ask that question? Like, this is a PC game. Was literally like the kickstarter thing yeah i mean and, the uh, squadron i think will end up there at some point it uh, seems yeah because it took 20 years to make it so like of course they can put it on a <laughs> consoles console can now consoles run it. are good now <laughs> yeah so it, it's uh i don't care if it goes on console or not but it's just it was uh they were definitely catering to the audience as much as possible and i found it interesting and they've the year before they were seeking a lot of new players we, we had the playable now thing last year they went to this market because it's an untapped market because they've tapped us do you buy ships anymore i haven't bought ships in like seven years man me neither because we they were tapped so they got to tap somewhere else actually I and that's an untapped market i'd buy a skin here and there but i, I don't i'm, I'm I don't, pretty tapped i don't know if i don't know if i would think they're specifically turning towards a market though exclusively for that reason not exclusively oh for that reason eh, probably i think so but the but i don't think that's the only market they care about mm -hmm. right but they're they're going this is untapped we can tap it because who wouldn't be interested in star citizen if they got a taste of it we'll see now that's that's where the question comes from because uh, you know, and my, I'm I'm crazy. Okay, I'm part of the. I'm in here. I'm all the way in yeah, Star Citizen. So I'm we're, like, we're both crazy. Yeah. I ask that question: Who wouldn't be interested in it? Well, there's a bunch of people who wouldn't, right? But it's it's obviously there's something about Star Citizen. But they that think about it. Everybody thinks about even everybody they knows hate it. it man, everyone they think knows about it. it. <laughs> everyone knows it because it's interesting. It's different. It's rent free. It's unique. It's special. It lives yeah. in the head. But what is it that that would stop people? from getting like 
what what's stopping star citizen from becoming the next wow it's not simple and i think they're the, it'll never be the next wow what made i mean i i'm the perfect person to answer that question i was playing ultima online and then wow came out and everybody left because ultima online was a, a too challenging to play that was the wow became what it became because they saw all of the feedback and problems with everquest and ultima online mm -hmm. being a little bit too hardcore or difficult or um just not simple they just streamlined everything that wasn't streamlined in those games mm -hmm. can you use the word streamlined for anything you do in star citizen at least now <laughs> no ah, ah ah i can streamline putting my vehicles in my ships now yes yeah there we go there we go <laughs> Right and cargo in your ships, kind of. Yeah. So it's um, they're they're maybe trying to get there, but that's what they would need to do. They would really need to simplify things, right? I think mm -hmm. master modes is a part of that a little bit, right? That was kind of the goal, and and that's a lot of the negative feedback from the PvP community. It's too easy. It's too simple. Bad players are are, um, you know, having an easier time now or whatever. Like that's not what they say. I just. I don't want to misquote them because it would mm -hmm. be rude, but the skill ceiling is shrunk significantly. Um, it's much closer together now, and there's no high end is their argument. And um, but that's that was wow, right? The PvP in Ultima Online was crazy in comparison to wow. What do you prefer? Do you prefer a deep game, not as popular? Or do you want to see Star Citizen spread and flourish and, and adapt game mechanics that make it more accessible? You want both. You, you want to give players the options. And, and what, what you need is the player who wants it simple to not, they can't be in, feel entitled to be able to earn uh, the Vandal Mask, right? Going all the way back to that. That was a, that was a challenging thing to do. Unfortunately, there was like, you know, an easy way to do it, yeah. but how they intended to, it, to do it, that was super hard for so many people. And it was like such an achievement for me to be able to do that because I wasn't a PVP -er and I wasn't good, but when I did it, it felt really great. We need more stuff like that, but you also need to deliver very simple, enjoyable cargo missions, mining missions, little pvp events or or pve type of things for players who want that kind of stuff you need to give players options um and i think where they really could succeed with that is you have pyro and you have terra and everywhere in between so you can have those simplistic things happening in a certain system and you can have the really challenging stuff in another right so maybe they can succeed in that way but i don't we won't know until we have two systems connect to one another and see what yeah. that dynamic is actually like, right? Yeah. We got I think Stanton's is going to get a lot safer, hopefully, when Pyro releases. That, that would to. be my hope. Yeah. Especially with reputation. Like, it just, it yep. has to. We can't, yeah. we can't be in a game where a beginner is coming in and is constantly in fear of getting killed. Yeah, for real. I'm, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Like, I think there needs to be almost two different games like the beginners friendly you're running missions you're doing stuff around your planet it's real simple and then like the very in-depth larger game that maybe you don't even really know exists for your first 10 20 hours because you're just doing all the basic stuff i can give an example for people who might be familiar with this game it's called albion online all right it Heard is a it. full loot like uh sandbox mmo it's like eve but with swords kind of in a way and they have um they have maps and you go from one map to the next map to the next. And there's like major cities and uh, one city is like in a winter biome and there's lots of ore around that city. And then another city is in a forest biome. There's lots of wood around that city, right? And, and all the surrounding maps that are near it. But the maps that are close to the cities are labeled blue. I could not be PVP'd there. Then as I move to try to get to the next city, they turn yellow and then they turn red, and then they turn black, and then they turn red, and then they turn yellow, and then they turn blue until I get to the city, right? So there's a sense of danger to get from one place to the next. But 
me. I just hung out in the blue areas, mined the stuff, and chopped the wood, and I sold it on the market and just played the game that way, and I had fun. But then I got bored, so I joined a guild that hung out in the black zones, and then all of a sudden I was PvPing in 300 versus 300 or 150 versus 150 people like wars. It was crazy. And then 5v5, like all these things. So it just, the options are there for people, but you just find your niche. But you you just have to understand that you, when I first get into the game, maybe I can't do this. And our community, I think, struggles with that because they bought a Carrick or they bought an 890 or they bought this, the end game thing, and they feel that they deserve everything and you don't deserve anything that you didn't earn right it's that's it and that's how video games work typically you earn the stuff that's the balance we expect star citizen to keep i hope i certainly Mm. hope so i i will never know because they could cave right it all depends but we'll see i certainly i'm still here because i think that they will yeah deliver that stuff base building was a big piece of that discussion of the lawless the middle ground and the lawful was very much describing that Albion online experience I just did, right? Yeah. So it's it feels that way. And and coming up with systems to force that without s- forcing us. I know a lot of people would like for to be like there are green zones your guns don't work. I I would I'm partial to that, but I really want CIG to try their hardest to have systems that make it naturally occurring before Me too. they just I just don't think it's possible. Zones. Yeah, it it with Internet people, probably not, but there is yeah, there's like, a compromise. Didn't like a whole org just get banned or something crazy like that? Yeah. Like this week. So it's like if if you're gonna allow people to do stuff, they're going to do it. And uh yeah. But that's that's because I, the I, systems I find that, the systems just yeah, aren't even there to help right now. Yeah. I know. And it's I, I like I I will not advocate for the way these people acted, right? But at the same time, it's like you you have to put you have to prioritize those systems. Yeah. And they can't because the servers can't handle them, but it's just that's what it is, you know. Yeah, we need that stuff to come in. But I am, you know, we we talked about low sec, high sec security and systems, but it's also planetary, right? Like you should be able to go and do a mission right outside of Loreville and be cool versus doing a mission 50 miles outside of Loreville. And like running into a possible pirate outpost so there's just so much scale involved in all of this but um it's it's important to get to that point and i think yeah. ultimately allowing for that to happen is yeah that's a pretty important thing for making sure it can appeal to a lot of people oh yeah oh yeah i think they could do it yeah i mean they put out Seems one like their minds in the right place yeah, they had one good citizen con, and look at how many people suddenly were hearing about this game now. It, a few, a few years of good press and good momentum behind this game, I think, would be really beneficial for them getting into yep. more, into more computers. Three twenty three might be three eighteen in terms of like interest. Yeah, it really do you could think three, be. Do you think three twenty three? Would you say it's on par with three point oh? No. Nothing, nothing because will the be back until end. 4.0. Yeah. J- just, it, it was such a monumental change that nothing, you know, 3.0, how it was sold was like, this is the, like, we're making the game now, guys. <laughs> we're making your game now. And everyone was like, let's go. They're making the game now. 3.1 is going to have this. 3.4 oh, is going to be farming. Oh, no. 3.4 yeah. was going to be new systems, Mike. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. And farming. 3.3 three three was, was farming. farming. <laughs> oh, Joe, oh, oh, my God. Okay. Then, <laughs> yeah. And and the Endeavor, right? And 3.3? Three, and three, three. So, yeah, it's like, dude. Oh, my God. That was... That, dude. 3.0, will, nothing will ever compare to that, I don't think. But uh, until 4.0, I should say. Mm-hmm. But 3.23 might be as, as especially if Replication Layer makes it into that patch. Um, that's a, like, our servers won't crash anymore? Wait, what? Gosh, right? if, yeah, if that happens, that's reinvigorating. A lot of people will come back. Yeah. And so, to wrap things up, how about for you? Are you, are you hyped, Mike, now? Are you feeling good about Star Citizen this year? How about... The most hype thing 
is the Evo patch notes are getting posted publicly. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I have tried for years. I have been pestering and pestering and pestering, and I finally, somebody heard me, I think. So thank God. They finally, yeah. it f finally got s snuck in like a brain worm. You know, I'm, I'm, my conspiracy, my little tin hat, is that they've, they're just finally at a point where they think that they have enough stuff going on that something ugly in evo wouldn't be a big deal whereas like two years ago if evo got out and like all the notes were out and people were panicking because it looked so bad it was like there wasn't enough also good stuff to kind of counteract that how about 318 evo probably looked a lot better than 318 live <laughs> That's so what's fair. the difference and then my tinfoil hat is like it's just it it, it hurts it the leaks it hurts the leaks oh, hmm. So you you start posting things publicly that they were using to build themselves up, it it hurts them. So that's right. my tinfoil hat thing. So I think it makes perfect sense. It just makes my life so much easier as an Evo member now. I felt like I had to um, suppress people who were just excited about the game that were not doing anything malicious. Um, on 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 in my communities, on my Discord, on my streams, and things like that. So for mm -hmm. me, it just I don't have to be mean to anybody for no reason, and uh, that's a good feeling. Yeah. So that's like honestly the most hype thing that happened this week for me. Cool. Anything yeah. else about the rest of the game that you're you're into? Any last thoughts? <sighs> yes, there was one thing I was just thinking of it. It'll come to me, but I can't think of it right now. Oh no. No problem. Let's uh let me think. I'll ask I you. I have notes. Mm. If you can't think of it, I can I can give you a, another question before. Go for it. All right. Will you ever take up the mantle as twerk again? No. <laughs> no, he died. Twerk Long died, so twerk. Salty Mike could could uh, thrive. Could could thrive and calcify. Yeah. I mean, dude, I couldn't... Like, people, when Twitch got popular, I couldn't... All these people at my job were talking about streaming and Twitch, and I just had to sit in the corner. <laughs> like, you know the meme where the guy's at the party with the cup and is yeah. like, they don't know I'm a Twitch streamer? <laughs> that was me. <laughs> I can't tell these guys my name because what's the question they're gonna ask? Oh, what's your yeah. screen name? Yeah, I'm gonna can't come watch you. you. Uh, can't yeah, tell you. Sure, twerk was it twerk seventeen? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Just can't you know, tell you. Sorry. Just don't search it on Google. Just specifically type it into Twitch, or you might get the wrong <laughs> <laughs> the wrong yep. things. Yep. Um, Everything changed is... when I changed that name. Thank God. Okay, here's here's something else then uh, that I can distract you with that could help with both mass appeal and make the game better is the freaking interaction system having mm. like a default action and stuff and just love it allowing you to to work with things is one of my best one of my favorite things that they're doing in 323 100% it's uh and and the fact that you can customize it to your needs like i know every time i go to loot a med pen i'm going to try to equip it first yeah and if i know i'm full i'm going to double tap f and put it in my inventory same thing with ammo Right. So now, OK, I know I just killed a guy with an FS9. I'm going to grab his ammo and put it in my inventory or mm -hmm. whatever. Right. Like just simple stuff like that. Just think about the amount of time. Go play the game right now. Go loot a body and try to you know, put the stuff on your inventories and all that stuff and count the amount of seconds it takes. It could potentially be over a minute. And then the interactions that they showed on that ISC were half a second yeah. to a second. Like the amount of time they're saving you there is wild. If only they could do that with the uh, train rides at the cities, it would. I like know, my train rides. rides. <laughs> I like my train rides, man. Good views. It it's gives true. me a Especially lot of micro tech. Like, yeah, it's usually when I get up to get a snack or something. <laughs> Quantum travel. All right. Have you remembered your 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 point? No, I can't find it. Thoughts? I'm looking for it. Ah, all right. But I could not find it. All right. Well, it sounds like you're feeling you're feeling good about the game. You don't have many reservations going on right now, other than like the server, the replication layer split. Seeing that coming, yeah. About. Wondering what's going on there. But cool, we'll man. See. Yeah. They I, haven't I mentioned just... anything new with mining, right? A little bit, tiny thing, but it didn't. It's not working. Um, I know the intention was always for them to like show you uh the explosion radius of something of the of a rock 
because mm. each rock has a different explosion value. And uh, there was something in one of the 322.1 PTUs that uh, said it will for, like do a nudging like force now when you catastrophically blow something up. Mm -hmm. I went into the PTU today. I blew, a bu blew up a bunch of rocks and I just stood still. So sounds sounds about right for a new patch note. Yeah, <laughs> give it a couple so updates know. before it works. Yeah, the intentions there, um, but that's all I've seen so far. And yeah, just you, interested in this dynamic event. Whatever happens there. Did you watch SCL yesterday? Yeah, it was kind of meh. Did you? Oh, okay. No, I haven't seen it yet. I'll I'll probably be watching it Monday. It was a lot of. Uh, like the, it's a meme that they said, you know, not, not in three twenty twenty three. Yeah, yeah I saw that. The thing is, is like we asked those questions, they chose them. Mm -hmm. How much can you talk about EVA and uh, interaction stuff that they they talked about at CitizenCon? They really went deep into it in ISC. There's not much more to add to these conversations, right? Right. So to take an entire hour and think you're going to fill that time up, it just didn't make sense to me. Like if I was Jared. Uh, I would just like take that lesson and learn from it a little bit and be like, all right, well, if we're doing a number of features with an individual team, we know this team is star map looting UI and they're doing other shows on those later, just bring them on to cover all of those as a whole. And then you can fill an hour most likely with it, but they, it just seemed like they could not fill the hour and it just got a little too much stale. communication. It's not bad. <laughs> Well, it's not it's a, a bad it, thing, I tell you it, that much. Yeah, good for them. It seems like they are they're they're on a grind and obviously they have deadlines that they're trying to hit and and things that they're trying to complete this year, but it's looking good. I like what yeah. we're seeing. Um for sure. Mike, thank you so much for joining me on this talk, opening up 2024, looking at a potentially pretty good year. I hope to have you on again later this year and we can talk about uh continued hype. Yeah, we'll see when uh, 323 comes out and I'm miserable cuz none of it's fun. <laughs> <laughs> well where can people find you playing 323 and the rest of your content uh twitch.tv slash salty mike at, at salty mike everywhere youtube and all that stuff uh, i'm trying to do more with youtube and uh just i want to just be more of like a general like update you on the news make more guides i finally feel like i'm getting into a groove of being a full-time creator where i'm scheduling my time out a little bit better and managing it and all that stuff so yeah it's the hardest part it's going good really is time is awful yeah it's <laughs> god um well congratulations dude you're coming up on almost like a year full-time now yeah in april nice, that's crazy man. i didn't yeah. even think about that until right now that's yeah. crazy wow good for you Thank dude you to, if if any of you guys that have supported me along the way are out there and uh, you included tomato is um thank happy you happy to dude yeah absolutely happy to. Wild. you are a huge part of this community yeah you, you help keep not just the salt flowing folks don't believe it <laughs> he is <laughs> a lot of good content go check out the channel both channels uh you've got you've got actually you've got three channels now right because you started one for the podcast yeah. yeah we moved the podcast over so answer the call at answer the call sc is the podcast cause somebody had to answer the call which is uh, not <laughs> ideal but all right man well thanks again for coming on talking about some star citizen um i'm looking forward to the next one when things are hopefully better throughout the year i, mean, things I can't are already wait really good, I'm, I'm so excited to just see yeah that's it i cannot same here. wait same anticipation's here. crazy this is the most hyped i think i've been for star citizen um yeah. ever because it just feels like we're on the cusp of something much bigger than we are, were before at least when right. i was playing all right man thanks again right. for coming thank you all for thank listening you. if you are on youtube uh our audio platform has no ads so you can always jump on there for a better experience but um, thank you to our supporters who are here with us live, making this possible. And thank you to all you checking out the YouTube videos and the streams. Please give continue Tomato to that do so. free uh, Prime. Don't forget, or <laughs> whatever it is. YouTube Prime, whatever they call it. Yeah. yeah. I'll have to check that out. But yeah. anyways, if you go, you'll see it'll be it'll say zero dollars. It's pretty sick. Cool. I, yeah, I think they should do that. You should be able to gift people me premium, or you should be able to gift people a membership if you have premium, because that's kind of how Twitch does it. But I guess they lose money on that. Yeah. But, uh, uh, either way, thank you again for joining me, Mike. Anytime. Appreciate it, dude. And I will see you all next week. Bye.